Uh, hey guys, it's Utonia here, and today I'm going to be showcasing something that's on the Singularity server, and that's going to be the ab new Abyssal PvP arena. Now, a lot of people have been focusing on really expensive brawling fits and really expensive counterfeits to the current sort of tier 5 meta of perma tank healers and sacrileges. A lot of people have been running things like Vedmax, Ashimus, and Curses, for example. I actually streamed a lot of it yesterday, if you want to go and check that out. Uh, it seems like uh, a lot of people were focusing on afterburner-focused fits that are really strong at brawling and have super high active tanks. So I'm going to show off uh, something that's the complete opposite of that, which is a really cheap, uh, this Caracal costs 30 million isk, and it's uh, designed to kite around. Basically, what I want to show you is sort of like a proof of concept that a cheap Caracal fit like this can run the tier 3 sites. They have been slightly rebalanced now, and there's now fewer NPCs, but they tend to be uh, sort of bigger NPCs. So it's actually a lot, it seems like it's a lot better for Rapid Lights than it was before the expansion or Onslaught. And I'm specifically going to be running uh, tier 3 electrical filaments with this fit just so it's perma-cap stable and I don't really have to worry about muting NPCs. You can see here that my character actually lasts for 33 minutes uh, running everything anyway, and since the PvP room encounter is 30 minutes uh, max before you die, I don't really have to worry, and I can always just turn off the, the invul for a cycle or pulse the MWD here and there if I really need the extra cap per second. Uh, so basically the, the idea behind this Caracal fit is that it's super cheap, you run through the tier 3 and then you go into the PvP room. If if no one comes in, the PvP room cash is worth a, a lot of isk, it's about the equivalent of 2 tier 5 uh, loot crates. So you're basically getting like almost a full tier 5 filament worth if you if you go into the PvP room and no one comes in with you. And you're only risking a 30 mil is cruiser. And if someone else comes in, you still have the potential to kill them with this caracal, which is awesome. And they're gonna be potentially flying, you know, one billion isk setups with really expensive pods. Uh, what's currently not on the Sissy uh, live environment now that I'm gonna show you is uh, the CCP Rise has mentioned because there's a lot of stalemates happening because people are. Uh, are fighting in these like super active tank brawling ships that perma tank each other there's going to be some sort of stalemate mechanic i think something was mentioned about a resistance nerf that ramps up over time uh kicking in like at about five minutes and then it slowly drains your resistances so the idea of even like, like this caracal even though it only does maybe like 400 dps if i was to load uh, fury missiles into here if the, if the if you can kite around and survive like 15 to 20 minutes in the arena their resistances might drain low enough that you can break through like a uh, a like two bill sacrilege or a two billion isk healer so you're only risking 30 million isk and potentially you could come back with <laughs> over a billion isk in loot and uh, that's the kind of pvp that super excites me so you know uh, about the fit and stuff i don't have any implants right now i don't have any boosters it would make sense so on tq to uh run with a really cheap booster like just the uh the pyrolancia uh like the db3 one because it's really cheap i think it's like 300k isk on uh, in jitter right now so it's very reasonable to take it. You could also maybe go with the 3% speed drug as well because that's also normally pretty cheap. Even the sort of higher tier speed drugs, they tend to be cheaper than the damage drugs by a long way. Uh, and, and that would just help you kite out a little bit more. So I'd recommend you go with that. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'm not using any uh, implants or anything like that. This is a very standard caracal fit. It's just five rapid lights. An enduring micro warp drive, two LSCs, a uh, invo, the medium cap battery, as I mentioned, just to make it cap stable. And since we're running the electrical filament, we're going to be 100% cap stable in there. And uh, then just three damage mods, uh, attack two EM rig, and two core defense field extenders. 
so a, a pretty cheap fit. Now since CCP has uh, done a bit of rebalancing uh, in the current Abyssal sites as I mentioned, it's actually now possible, it, it does take quite a while, uh, and it can be, I don't know, I guess a little dull at times. In some of the rooms that take a long time to, to run. But you can actually run the tier 3 electrical site in this uh, 30 mil is Caracal. And so what I want to show you off in this video is the fact that, first of all, you can just you can just do the uh, do a tier three in a caracal, and even if you're not interested in in the PvP part of it, you can still just run a tier three in a caracal, which is a, a lot of isk. You could also drop the medium injector here for a, sorry the medium cap battery for a small injector, if you're having troubles with fitting. I know there's fit right now. Uh, it, it does have quite a lot of CPU left over, but it doesn't have much power grade. I think it probably needs like large shield extenders, uh, the shield upgrade skill level 5, and probably advanced weapon upgrade 5. You could always go with a, a cheap uh, power grade implant, or you could just check, drop this medium cap battery for a small injector. It's just slightly more annoying because you, you'll just have to inject. But you can easily carry enough uh, Navy 400 charges in your cargo to be able to, uh, to perma inject through, through like the majority of a PvP encounter over the 30 minutes. So let's just take this uh, damage drug. The, uh, we're only using the cheap, cheap 3% one, and let's go inside. Uh, primarily, I'm going to be using Kodoi Navy Mjolnir light missiles here, uh, just because uh, the Caracal has a bonus to all missiles, and the Fierce Electrical has a resistance penalty to uh, EM damage. I'm also carrying Acolyte 2s for that reason. So we've got a, a, a Ghosting, a Tangling, and uh, two Horroring Vedmax in this room. Uh, we really want to get rid of the Tangling first if we possibly can, because that's going to uh, web us down if it catches us. Uh, when you go into a room like this, you should keep in mind that you kind of spawn in the center of it, and you've got about 50 kilometers that you can burn behind you. So you should be able to just burn away a little. Uh, behind, like I just burn away behind me and then start moving uh, slightly to the to the left after I burn about 30 kilometers. That's where the arena edge is. You don't really have to worry too much about going outside the arena edge. In this specific spawn, I just wanted to kill the the webbing one. We're now just gonna kill the uh, the ghosting one because it's just kind of annoying because it's gonna drain my optimal range. I'm gonna use what what's left in my uh, in my rapid lights right now on these Vedmax. I'd recommend that you set uh, auto reload off. I've already set it off on here, just so you can choose uh, which damage type to reload into. A module has run out of so uh, these are a bit bigger. I believe Nova Fury actually out damages EM against Vedmax, uh, even though you get you do fifty percent more damage against them with EM. Because they have like 60% EM resistances, but they only have like 30% explosive. I believe it works out better to load explosive on them. Uh, I, could, I could be completely wrong there. But you can use Furies on these guys because they have really big signature radiuses. And they're very easy to kite out. You're actually faster than the, the Vedmax. So now you can just kind of fly around and uh, do whatever you want. Uh, one thing as well that's really cool about the micro warp drive is that they, there are these new extractor, uh, these new Triglavian extractors and drillers and things. You can sort of fly around and loot them pretty easily if you're in like a, a micro warp drive fit like this. As well, so we're, we're just gonna uh, pick off and kill these uh, these Vedmax here. Just make sure you stay about 25 kilometers away from them. They start shooting you at about 22 kilometers or so. So this Vedmag just started shooting me now when I got closer than 21 kilometers to him. You can de they definitely don't do like super amounts of damage as long as you don't let them ramp up on you. So it's okay for you to fly into range like that for a little while. But you just don't want to stay there or especially get tackled. I'm gonna load into Mjolnir now just to compare to see if Mjoln is better to shoot at them than Explosive. I think Explosive is probably better to shoot at them. I was doing uh, I was doing consistent, like I think six, uh, 
Wow, well, he was doing like 6664 consistently to that Ved Mac when we were shooting his uh, armor resistances. So let's take a look and see if uh, Fury is going to do more DPS. But, but essentially, the, the concept behind this caracal is we're just going to kite out all of the rims. We're just going to burn around, make sure we kill the uh, webbing and scrambling drones. So that will be the anchoring Damovix and the uh, and the tangling Damovix for the frigate rats. There's also uh, a, a webbing drone that you'll also probably want to get rid of. Two. I believe there's also a, a there's also a a seeker that does it too. I think it's called entangling. But essentially, you just want to primary the. Uh... So see, we're always doing a six six four with uh, with explosive, and we're doing like six twenty with EM. So uh, it, it's better to shoot the Vedmax with ex explosive, but it doesn't make a, a huge difference anyway. Uh, and since EM is going to go through their shields and structure a little faster, uh, I, I guess it probably doesn't make much of a difference. So we, we want to just make sure we're reloading as soon as we go into the next room. If you really wanted to, you could take the time to loot the, loot the crates and stuff. I'm on Singularity right now, so I'm just going to keep going. I would say most rooms in this caracal, on average, take about five to six minutes. So you have about two minutes or so uh, for looting and, and stuff. And since you have a micro-op drive, you can probably burn around and get all the loot if you really wanted to. Uh, another cool thing as well about this caracal is because it's cheap, like you could make a decision if you don't get any good loot drops, you could go into the PvP room, but if you looted stuff and found that the loot drops are actually pretty good, you could just not opt to go not into the PvP room and keep your decent loot. That, that's another cool concept that I like about the PvP room, is if you get if you don't get any good drops, you could just decide to risk everything. So here we go, we're inside a room with some, with some Damovex now. There's three Damovex and there's also some drones. Uh, we, want to kill the tangling Damovix first obviously because they are going to web us down and they're going to be quite dangerous so we're just gonna burn away from these guys I'm gonna heat here too because one of them got pretty close to me and while you're heating you can kind of barely outrun them uh, another trick is uh, you can put out your drones uh, since the the webbing drones and the anchoring drones uh, the anchoring Damovix I should say they tend to have a, uh, they, they tend to prioritize killing drones a lot higher. And so what will often happen is if you do get tackled by them, if you put out your drones, they can sometimes uh, instead uh, target your drones and they'll start webbing them down instead. That you might lose a drone doing that, but if you're getting webbed and tackled by the NPCs, it's probably better to put out your drones to bait clear tackle off of you. So now that the webbing drones are dead, uh, we're not really in any danger here. Uh, has run out of striking Damovix almost always go for drones. So uh, just be careful, you, you don't want to lose your drones before going into the PvP encounter because otherwise you're going to be at a disadvantage versus other players. So now this room is very similar to the other room. Uh, Almost all rooms play out the same. The only really dangerous room that I have a very difficult time with is the Drifter room. Uh, we'll see if we encounter the Drifter. But the Drifter is very hard to get under his guns. Uh, you have to heat MWD. And he will track you until you get to about 20 kilometers uh, or, or closer to him. But the problem is not necessarily the Drifter itself. It's the support that's with him. If, you, if you're on top of the, the Drifter so that you're under his guns, his support is going to be killing you. And unlike more traditional like PvE fits where that normally wouldn't be a problem with the active tank that you have, since you're buff of it and and uh, the NPCs d that are with the Drifter often do quite a lot of damage. If you're not active tanked anyway, if you're just buffer tanked, they, they can be a real problem. So what you want to do in the Drifter room is you want to kite outside the Drifter's optimal range. I believe it has an optimal of uh, around 65 kilometers. So what you want to do in a drifter room is uh, kite immediately backwards. So 
so that you're outside the uh, the drifter NPC's range. The drifter the drifter battleship is particularly quite slow, so you can burn away at the, at the into the back of the room and then kill his uh, support like normal. And then once you've killed his support, uh, come back in with like heated invo and, and heat uh, on that warp drive and get under his guns. It, it's definitely a lot a lot more dangerous, and I tend to lose about two thirds of my uh, buffer HP uh, fighting him. But yeah, we're mostly just cleaning up this room. It, it typically takes me about three reloads to clear each room, and about five mi minutes, as I mentioned, per room. So the red max in range of me again, but as soon as I pull away, back out to uh, uh, 22 kilometers, he'll stop doing damage to me. You can see that you know you can afford to take a bit of damage from the red max. You just don't want them to ramp up on you. So as long as you, you know, kind of break the like 20, 22, 23 kilometers where they stop shooting you, has run out of charges. they're they're not really a uh, they're not really a, a big problem. And you could probably go uh, pretty lazy and just put like default orbit on as well if you don't really want to manually pilot the whole time like this. You just got to be careful that the game doesn't like push you out into the abyss. You know, like just like that. So you, you almost always want to be manually piloting. You also probably just want to make sure that you're close to the, the, uh, the gate. When you kill this last NPC. As I mentioned, it, take, it takes a bit more than 5 minutes per room for me. Normally I, I end with about 2 minutes left on the clock. So uh, we're going to relo start reloading to Kodari Navy Mjolnir. Uh, while you're reloading it's probably a good time to loot the crates as well. Since we're probably not going to activate the gate until we're fully reloaded because it do doesn't really make any sense to. You can <laughs> take the time to just uh, get some loot. And like I mentioned, if you get a particularly good drop from the BS, you could just decide to not go into the PvP room. If you end up getting like, let's say, like a, a new, like a precursor skill book, or maybe like one of the battle cruiser and uh, destroyer BPCs on launch, I imagine they'll be pretty uh, pretty popular. All right, so we, we just got another. I just got another Damovic room. Uh, this one's with the two, the two Vedmax, so there's not as many NPCs in here. Same deal as before. We're just gonna kill the Tangling ones because uh, they're gonna web us down. They're they're the best one to kill first. If you have a choice between shooting a Tangling Damovic and an Anchoring Damovic, I think it's normally best to kill the uh, to primary the uh, the Anchoring ones over the the Tangling ones because if you if you get scrammed, they reduce your speed by five times. But if you get webbed, they're only halving your speed. Although, uh, I, I would say that the uh, the anchoring Damovix tend to uh, prioritize drones uh, quite a bit more than the tangling ones. So, 
So if you get tackled by an anchoring one or you're going to get tackled, like putting out your drones for bait can sometimes clear them uh, a, a bit faster. A module has run out of charges. Uh, th there is a medium turret there, so we want to be careful with our drones here. In fact, we should probably call them in, I wasn't going to lose them before we even get to the PvP encounter. But I'm taking damage from the Vedmax right now, uh, and uh, I'm a bit outside the arena too, so I, I really should start heating here. Don't be afraid to heat your micro drive if you get caught in a bad position like like I did there. You can see once you once you break their once you break their range, then there's really no danger to the Vet Max. You just gotta make sure you don't get caught up against the abyss by them like that. With uh, better, if I was piloting better, I could have probably avoided that situation. I don't think Vet Max will. will primary drones either so like once you're clear of any like deviant towers you can maybe put out your drones to help clear things a bit faster <coughs> a module has run out of charges And uh, this is the gate to the PvP room, the uh, Triglavian pro proving, proving conduit. This guy's uh, gonna die. So let's start reapproaching the uh, the probing conduit. So w once you clear this, you probably want to start repairing your heat. Probably want to reload into something. Uh, you know, uh, me only. I guess Inferno Fury is probably a decent type. Although I'd probably reload Kodari Navy because your game plan. Uh, it's probably going to be going to be kiting out dudes again. You could probably get get loot. It's a lot safer to check loot and get the cat get the drillers in the third room because you know exactly how much time you have left. So there's not as much gambling. Uh, repair, <laughs> repair my bottom models right now because uh, my taskbar is preventing me from uh, reaching the uh, repair module. Unfortunately, you can't do it from there. You just figure out how to uh, hide the. Uh, there we go. But anyway, since you have a bit of time before you could before you take the PvP room, just make sure that you you know you you've got everything wrapped up. You've got the ammo loaded. So it's probably a good idea to just sit here until uh, until there's only a few until a few minutes left as well. Just let your shield HP buffer go up again. While while you're in Vault and MWDR Office too, you, you can regenerate back up to maximum capacitor again, just so that you're in like the perfect fighting shape you can be for the uh, PvP room. Uh, I'm looking pretty good too, so I'm going to show you off the PvP room. I think I'm just uploading this video to show that you can actually run 
the tier threes in the caracal now. And this is, you know, a very cheap caracal, and you could potentially get the uh, the two tier five cans of loot in the PVP can if no one comes in. You could even maybe even end up killing someone too, which would be uh, crazy cool if you could like kill a one bill healer or something. So here's the PvP room, uh, it looks really cool, uh, it's a PvP, uh, this is the PvP arena, you can see here it has this like clock ticking effect, and uh, the, the arena just looks super cool. So I was the first one in this, arena, in this arena, if someone else was already in this one, they would already be in. You can see here this is the uh, unlocking timer on the Cladastic Cache, if no one else comes into this PvP room within 5 minutes, uh, you'll get the loot. And so, in this 30 million is Caracal, if no one else comes in, if this was on TQ, then I would get a bunch of uh, expensive loot, almost equivalent to running like a tier 5 site. Except for unlike risking a like a 2 billion is kilo or, or a expensive sacrilege or something, I'm only risking the, uh, the 30 million is Caracal. Uh, the, the, the arena uh, size is approximately about 150 kilometers from one end to the other. I, I guess I can show, show you that offer now. I actually dropped a can uh, when I was streaming it yesterday to measure it, but it's almost, uh, it's just a bit short, shorter than 150 kilometers. It's like 148. You can also afford to go outside the arena too. It doesn't do too much damage. if you only go out about five kilometers. And there's this really cool effect and sound when someone else comes in. So someone else just came in in a VEDMAC. Oh, uh, this is on Sissy right now. So uh, th there is no stalemate mechanic yet. There's gonna be some kind of resistance debuff or some kind of debuff that prevents, uh, that makes it so that to prevent stalemate. So like the fights don't end. At the 30 minute timer, you can see here there's a, a 30 minute timer. If that timer ends and both people die in the site, I'm in something that's super cheap. Uh, it looks like this Vedmac has a micro drive, so my Caracal would probably die to him. But that's fine given that I'm not really risking all that much. Again, you know, if my Caracal dies, then it, it doesn't really matter to me because I'm only risking a, a 30 million isk ship. A lot of the ships that I've seen in the in the abyss so far, a lot of the super tanky ones, normally are actually afterburner only. They don't have micro warp drives like this guy has. So this guy's in a, a fit that's uh, a bit different to the meta. A module has run out of charges. And he has like a super expensive web and stuff too because it's on sissy. But but that's fine. Obviously, uh, any kind of uh, like expensive ship with a micro drive is going to counter my caracal here. Uh, wh what's funny too is you could go outside the arena maybe to uh, to deny your loot or make it harder for someone to loot you. Like if you know you're you're going to die, what you can do uh, is you can you can just heat your micro drive into the uh, into the abyss here. And that way, if he wants to loot my Caracal, I mean, my Caracal's worth nothing anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But if I just go outside into the uh, into the abyss, then it makes it a bit harder for him to loot my stuff. What I think that's really, uh, really interesting about the the new, uh, the, the new PvP arenas is, uh, if you actually kill someone, the gate un if you kill their ship, the gate unlocks, but you don't actually have to kill their pod, and their pod can still get outside the abyss when the, when the gate unlocks. So it might actually bring back uh, pod ransoming, which I, I think would be uh, pretty hilarious. 
if a lot of people are running them with expensive pods and you manage to kill them, you could just uh, like ask for one billion isk, uh, and you don't kill that pod, which would be a uh, which would be like a, a very good. Uh, it would save them like two billion isk buying a new high grade set, and you would just get like a bunch of extra money, which would be really nice. Of course, like, uh, ransoming is kind of dead on TQ right now, because so many people decide that they're going to uh, dishonor ransoms. But uh, I wonder if, if there's, like, an abyssal community where it, it matters about your reputation of honoring pods. Where you could just make a bunch of money doing that. Anyway, this was just a short video just to show off the arena, the, the mechanics... And that you can get in there uh, and have fun PvPing or getting like great loot, potentially getting a, a super expensive kill mill if you just happen to uh, end up fighting the right ship in just a, you know a thirty million s cruiser.